Uh, this is for the gaffer. Um, January is approaching. Have we got anyone in mind? Any more signings just to make a few, few final touches there? Yeah, we're, um, we're working very hard now to to add two or three players. Um, the quality of player we're, we're looking at makes it take a little bit longer, a little bit harder to get them. Um, sometimes it's a bit convincing them to be at the level, like we had to do with Sergio and we've had to do with Pablo and, and others. But I'm, I'm confident that, that New Year's Day or the 2nd of January will be a good day for Crawley Town. With the progress that the club's made in the cup then, um, and the money that's obviously been generated, has any mention of money been, been said to you about what you can spend and what you can't spend? Uh, well, I've got to be careful. <laughs> um, when we say we don't have a budget, then so the Bruce would shake their head and say, in their minds we do. But we, we don't approach it like that, we approach it looking at the squad peak, looking at players that we'd like to sign, looking at the values that the clubs place on those players, and then the board by the directors will sanction it or they won't, won't sanction it. Um, there's no fixed sum, but you know, we'll, we'll certainly be paying some, some decent money out if we, if we get the players that, we've, that we're trying to agree with to get from other clubs. But we're, we, I can genuinely state now that Paul will tell you this today, we are <coughs> very, very close. We've got permission from two clubs to speak to two players after Boxing Day uh, because they want to protect the players for Boxing Day. And we have to respect that those players don't even probably know about our interest at this stage. Um, and there's, there's two other clubs that we're, or one other club that we're discussing and trying to agree a fee with it. Can I just thank the club for their initiative in sending um, the players into the schools? I know that uh, my grandson was over the moon the other day when um, Brody and Fadson went into West Green Junior School and met all the kids and it went down that school tree. And I don't know if you're doing it in other schools, but I think it's a tremendous initiative and it gets out into the community even more. So well done at the club. No, no I, think, I think it's important when we go into the schools. I think that the players are keen. Um, if schools come and approaches and it's sensible timings and, and stuff like that for the players, then the, the boys loved it, didn't they? Yeah, the, the school sent us a brochure with stuff that the work that the kids had done and everything, and you know, showed it around the boys today, and they were very appreciative. So obviously, we were getting out there, the word spreading, and you know, getting more kids in here, not, you know, all the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> and the kid kid from Ron, the 14 year olds are brighter than uh, Kevin Fadgett. <laughs> 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 nice to agree to him. <laughs> be able to do is you know pick players that are of you know equal standard to the ones that uh, are going to miss out and, and, and that's what we're endeavouring to do and that search has gone on from the start of the season you know we're always looking to improve and uh, I think the guys that we've brought in so far we've not got too many wrong so uh, if we're sitting here at the end of the season you know saying the same sort of things then uh, we'll be doing all right so uh, so that's the aim is to uh, you know to make the squad stronger and uh, as I say it's been a you know, long long hard search and Plenty of hours on the motorways, and, and we've got scouts all over the country looking at you know, perspective uh, signings. And uh, as I say, they've done a great job for us as well. So, you know, they identify players as well, and, and they put the man hours in, and, and that's all part of putting a successful squad together. And uh, as I say, we're all a big team, and it, it seems to be going quite well at the moment. So, long well, may that continue. Steve, um, you mentioned that you were going to be more difficult negotiations taking place, is it harder to take somebody away from a competitor? Um, you've got to think that Luton are going to be criminally insane to let us have, even if it's 20 million you're buying from one of their star players. Is it harder to take a player from a direct competitor in our league or persuade a player to drop down a division or arguably two divisions as Serge did? Which is the harder do you think to Well, achieve? I think it's impossible to take them from Luton and um in Wimbledon, if you call it down, because they just put it up. You know, I've got I've got a fax downstairs, and, and Alan got a copy of that fax when Wimbledon, when we tried to buy Kedwell, actually put in writing that no matter how much money we offered, not matter how much, it would never be accepted by that football club. Um, we we think it's easier to get them from above, and I think the standard is the standard of is normally higher. I feel like a higher standard game above, and there's probably more clubs. In a, in a league or two higher that can be doing with the money more than probably the top half of the conference because um, they don't probably manage their, their business properly. The problem you have is then convincing the player to come out of the Football League and play in the league 
and, and that's often the biggest challenge. And it doesn't, it never comes down, or very seldom comes down to money or anything like that. You have to, you have to sell them a vision of where we want to go and how we can get there. And you know, thankfully, we've done quite a bit of that in the summer. It's easier now because of where we are in the league. If we were sitting seventh or eighth in January, it would be almost impossible to bring players from the football the league because where we are and to see what the club's done and fact beach is and it's on you know we got good publicity and we've got another one coming then it it certainly helps so the answer i think is probably slightly easier overall from from above the facilities in Edmund Goss are a lot better here than they were at barnet you know and um yeah you know, so obviously the club want to do it you know sort of properly which is another big thing and um i've really enjoyed it and Long, long, like Lane said, long may it continue to sort of like the success like the club's having at the moment. Steve, um, can you tell us what the situation is with uh, Danny Borman? Uh, will he remain a, a Crawley Town player in the new year? Absolutely, yeah, everyone's agreed. Um, he'll, uh, he'll join us on a permanent basis after Boxing Day. Um, he can't. He can't play after Boxing Day until the 1st of January because you need to miss the Hazen Yearing game at home because he's 93 day loan period is up. But every, everything is agreed. I think he'll, he'll sign it the next day or two. Everyone's been agreed with Oxford, so so we're, you know, uh, and he's, he's a massive, massive important signing for us. Good. So, so um, uh, and so we will have to pay a fee for him? No, there's no fee involved. No fee involved. No, no fee involved. Um, you know, but um, we're too, you know, Danny's seen the. Danny went off to Oxford at the time for for bigger club, you know, better remuneration, all the all the right reasons as a family man and as a as a good footballer. But in his words, no mine. It's all the town is a different club that he's come back to, and it's it's in a par with anything professionally he's he's been in, and that's a big compliment. But he's a he's a great lad in the dressing room. He's you know he's he's great to have in the place, and more importantly, he's great on the pitch. So, so when you were when you're calculating that maybe you need two or three more players, you've already taken into account that Danny Borman won't be one of those two or three. Yes. So yeah, he's yeah. he's actually yeah, part yeah. of the squad. Yeah, we just count yeah. Danny as a as a fixture now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. The opportunity yourself to, to see Derby. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll watch Derby when they play at Forest on the 29th of December. I'll, I'm already booked my tickets for that game, so I'll be there. And it'll be exactly there. It'll be myself and Paul go that night. But you know uh, exactly what happened for uh, for Swindon, you know, and our assessments in the, in the main got done with got done with G as the W Palace, and um, listen, Derby, Derby could come here and win three or four nil. We know that, you know, but, but you know, I, I remember the little things at first when we drew Swindon. G went off to watch Swindon and he fought me up as I'm driving home at six o'clock and said we can beat these if you go and look. And he went and watched Derby lose at Bristol City last week and he fought me in the car and said. If you go and look, you can beat these, and that that means we can beat them. That's not it'd be nailed on. We'll beat them. <coughs> that means we could beat them. So we'll do it, and we'll prepare the team exactly the way we did for for uh, for Swindon. So you'll get them watched a few times, right? Really. Yeah, they'll they'll Derby will be watched every game they play between now and when we play them. Swindon play every game that Swindon played after the draw. I watched them in Notts County as well. As well, we watched them again Sheffield Wednesday. You watched them every other time, uh, and they'll they'll have another. Lad who does reports for us, uh, who'll watch them, whatever they are this week, and then uh, you'll pick them back up, and then I'll pick them up on the 29th, and then we'll watch them on the third, or listen to them if they've got a game. I think we have to be careful in, I think we have to be careful in January, I get, rem I get reminded of this by, by one of our owners, by Susan Carter, often, it's, and she's dead right, we have to be careful in January we don't do an Oxford. And what Oxford did last year was went and signed, on paper, five or six better players. In reality, there was only Jake Wright that improved them. So we have to be careful um, that we don't come up with our hatch plan to go and sign five or six. Because Crawley Town don't need five or six to be champions. We need two or three to be champions.